One win away from the NCAA tournament, a CAA women's basketball champion will be crowned today from Newark, Delaware, as the number four Towson Tigers take on the number two seed, Drexel Dragons. Hello everyone, I'm Scott Klatskin alongside Jody Patrick. Welcome into the Bob Carpenter Center where today the Towson Tigers will play in the CAA Championship for the very first time while the Drexel Dragons are back for the second year in a row. Both teams had varying levels of difficulty to get here in the semifinal round. Well, Towson, a 21-point semifinal victory. Absolutely a 94 by 50 game. So many turnovers, but so many baskets as well, Scott. And then Drexel, I got to tell you what, an overtime game, 73-69, possession by possession. And if you want star power in your championship game, you've come to the right spot. The two leading scorers in the CAA will match up today. For Drexel, CAA Player of the Year, Bailey Greenberg. And for Towson, Kiana Jeter had 30 points in the quarterfinal round. As you can see right there, Bailey is just very tough in the paint, but she also knows how to hit from the outside as well. Nice turnaround jumper, a kiss off the glass right there. But Kiana Jeter, I gotta tell you what, 94 by 50 is her game. She loves to run, they get her the ball, she can finish right and left. She also has a nice little outside game. She can pull up at the baseline right here and she drains it. So two very star powered players today. A ticket to the NCAA tournament is on the line. Towson versus Drexel, next. It's the CAA Women's Basketball Championship. Towson Drexel from the Bob Carpenter Center. Welcome in. I'm Scott Klatskin alongside Jody Patrick. And we are ready for the starting lineups. Let's take a look at the Towson starting five. You can see a great lineup of players. We talked about Kiana Jeter. Nakaya Mayo had 22 points yesterday. And Q Murray, she makes things happen at that point guard spot, leads the CAA in assists. For the number two seed, Drexel Dragons. They're led by the player that we mentioned up front, the player of the year in Bailey Greenberg. But Nikki Metzl, no one's played better than her in this CAA tournament. Her first two games, 20 against William & Mary and 24 against Northeastern. The head coaches for these two teams somewhere in that huddle working hard, drawing up plays already is Diane Richardson, the 2019 CAA Coach of the Year, Towson, a 10-win improvement from 2018. For the Drexel Dragons, she's been in this position before. Denise Dillon, 16th year as the head coach of the Drexel Dragons, fourth most wins in CAA history with 306. Let's now welcome in the third member of our broadcast team on the sideline is Matt Janis. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Drexel has to feel very fortunate to be here having survived Northeastern in overtime in yesterday's semifinal round. Thanks in large part to the smallest player on the floor. Hannah Nihil played excellent defense on Northeastern's best player, Jess Jenko, holding her to just two of 15 shooting from the floor. We asked Denise Dillon after the game how Nihil was able to hold up and not wear down playing so hard so long in that game. Dylan simply laughed, saying, Hannah Nihil does not get tired. And I mean that literally. Then she told a story about the first time Nihil arrived on campus, a pickup game with her teammates in August. She was all over the floor. Aubrey Brown, her teammate, asked Nihil to slow down because she was wearing everybody out. Dylan learned about it later, went to Nihil and said, I don't want to ever hear about you slowing down. That's exactly what we want. That's what you bring to this team. And boy, did it pay off in the semifinals yesterday. Back to you guys. Thank you, Matt. Hannah Nihil, sophomore, Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. Her and her teammates ready to play for the CAA Championship for the second year in a row. Drexel wearing the home whites as a two seed. The Towson Tigers in the road black uniforms. And we are underway for the CAA Championship. I think you're going to see right now that defense is going to be very important. Player to player by the Dragons, Scott. Nihil and Murray, what a matchup that is. Murray, one of the best point guards with the ball in her hand in the league. And Nihil, as Matt mentioned, one of the top defenders you'll find in the conference. Well, as Matt said, she did such a good job against Jenko yesterday. And she's not helping off of all at all on Q Murray. And Jeter got the first shot, but nothing but rim run on that shot, Scott. Jeter had 30 in the quarterfinal round, held to nine points yesterday in the semifinal action. 
These two teams met twice in the regular season, splitting a pair of games in Greenberg doing Greenberg things. The CIA Player of the Year scores first. And what she did so well on that, Scott, is a nice little pump fake, and she was able to finish hard going with her left hand. That's, that bodes well. It sets up her outside game as well. Murray, transfer from Appalachian State. Then George Mason, now Towson goes inside. Nearly a turnover. Jeter late in the shot clock again with the basketball, and they're not going to get it off. Two late shot clock plays for Towson. One and a turnover, one and a bad shot by Jeter. Well, what's so important is the tempo, and there's no question that Drexel wants to slow the game down. And they have in the last two, the first two possessions, they have made Towson have to play half-court offense, and that's not really what Towson wants to do. Towson, don't get me wrong, Towson can do it, and they're good at it, but they'd rather go 94 by 50, and they just did what they had to do right there. It's exactly what Drexel wanted, Scott. Saw the two coaches, Diane Richardson and Denise Dillon, 16th season for Coach Dillon, 306 wins. So impressive what she's done in Philadelphia. Well, and, and you know, you mentioned Diane Richardson as the 2019 Coach of the Year. Well, Denise Dillon was the 2018 Coach of the Year. So they obviously know what they are doing, how to do it, and their teams are responding. Turnover for the Dragons, their first. A 2-0 lead for Drexel. Fought to overtime last night against Northeastern, a four-point victory less than 24 hours ago. Does that make a difference when you have to play at 1 o'clock the next day, a traveling violation well, by Townsend? I, I think one of the things, the adjustments is, and this is something unusual for Drexel, they did not take the shoot-around this morning, and that's unusual. They, you know, like like clockwork taking shoot-arounds. So Denise Dillon decided, hey, I'm going to let him sleep in a little bit. Um, and then the rest of it, no, adrenaline's taking over here, Scott. <laughs> and when you know that the NCAA is on the line, you'll find it somewhere inside. Nye Hill finds the front rim. Lee, one of the best rebounders in the conference, fifth most in the CAA with a rebound there. Jeter in rhythm, can't get Towson on the board. And over the back call goes against Lee. First foul on Towson. Nice box out right there, and I, I, you know, I can tell that Maya Lee was saying, "What? That was a that was an over the back." But you know, it's called that early, so now that's the precedent by the officials. But you can see Diane Richardson there. Uh, you know, really, you know, she works the sideline hard, Scott. She she works. She she could uh, run up and down with with the team if she could, but she's really going to work hard on defense right now, making sure that her team knows where to to play against this tempo offense that Drexel runs. That's her first touch. The Canadian point guard, Washington. And the shot clock down to five. How about a freshman with the shot clock winding down in a championship game with no jitters, pulls up and gives Drexel a 4 nothing lead? Well, Scott, one thing, when, when you're playing in March now, you're not a freshman anymore. You're a sophomore. So, you know, even though that she's one who she, she knows that she's got to be able to take something at that point. She's doing it with much more than, than freshman experience. Townsend again late in the shot clock. Holder this time, and the up and under from Ryan Holder, the transfer from UMass, gets it through. First bucket of the game for Townsend. Jody, we're still early in this game. What are some keys for both teams? Well, it's going to be very important for the defensive principles of, Ta of Towson. They have to make sure that they have help defense and know how to play against this. Now, that the, and, and on for Drexel, they're gonna make, they've got to make sure that they know where Keanu Jeter is at all times. Nikki Metzl with the basket there. 44 points in her first two games in the CAA tournament. The sophomore from Princeton, New Jersey. Makes it a 6-2 lead. Well, and in yesterday's semifinal game, it was a career high for her, Scott, at 24 points. She matched her uniform number. Mayo forces one and gets it. She stays hot, 22 points. Yesterday, second most of the season, and she continues to shoot the ball well. Their first two baskets, Scott, have been in the paint, and that's what I know Coach Diane Richardson wants. She wants to attack hard. She feels that they have an advantage inside. Nice defense right now. 
by by the uh, Tigers, they're saying they're letting Nihil just take that. They're saying, you know what? We know we, you want to take it inside. Go ahead and take the three. She's missed two thus far. 30% three-point shooter on the season. Jeter, a miss, lay an offensive rebound, and she is fouled on the reach. Well, Keanu Jeter is talking to the officials right now and saying, you know, I think I got hit on that shot, but the rebounding is going to be key for the Tigers. If they keep crashing like that, that's going to work for them, Scott. Mayo and the Towson Tigers down two. We'll be back in a moment. It's a CAA championship. A 6-4 lead for the Drexel Dragons in the CAA Women's Basketball Championship here at the Bob Carpenter Center. Just getting started in the first quarter. And let's take another look at your keys to this game, Jody. Well, for Towson, the discipline defense against the tempo offense of the uh, Dragons is very important. They want to go 94 by 50 and pushing the pace. Now, for the Dragons, they have to know where Jeter is at all times. She is going to be trying to take it inside and outside. And then offensively, as I said, their tempo is how they won the game yesterday against Northeastern. They really had a very disciplined offensive set late in that game. They need to do that today, Scott. Lee at the free throw line. An offensive rebound got herself a trip to the stripe. And if you're Towson right now, they've got quick guards. I'm sure Coach Richardson wants them to attack. Absolutely, they need to go in because if not, if they don't get something, Scott, at least there'll be a drive and a dish. And, and that's how it's important for them to attack the paint. Three ball on the way into the action. Off the bench is Mara Hendrickson. 32nd three-point shot of the season. She's only taken 10 two-pointers all year <laughs> long. She loves to hang out there, and if I could shoot like that, I would as well. Jeter looking for an answer, can't get it. Well, she obviously, Hendrickson obviously knows what her role is. And uh, prior to the game, Coach Denise Dillon said, I don't know, Hendrickson might go in. I'm surprised she didn't take that one right there. Me too, gave it up to another freshman in all rookie team selection, Kishana Washington, who missed. Jeter around Brown and a rebound by Hendrickson. Dribbled off her foot, Brown saves it momentarily, but an unforced error by the Dragon. Keanu Jeter right now is forcing it, Scott. She needs to just let the game come to her. She's not happy. She missed that shot. She slapped her hand. She's got to keep her head up because the team really plays off of her. Scott, they lost by 33 points, 77-44, one week ago to, to Drexel. And she was not, Keanu Jeter was not a factor in that game. She was just took herself pretty much out of the game. Daniel Dershon off the bench. Both teams getting some bench points now as Dershon, the senior from Montgomery County, Maryland. We asked Coach Dillon, do you look back at that 33-point game? It was just a week ago, and she said, no, every game is different for this Drexel team. Right, and, and she had to say that because you want to, <laughs> you got to make sure that the team comes in hungry and not thinking, oh, we got this. But I'll tell you what, you know who is coming in hungry and playing well is Bailey Greenberg, the player of the year, but she also was on the all-defensive team. She knows how to D it up as well, Scott. And that's interesting as uh, Mayo gets another two for the Towson Tigers. A lot of times when you look at the top scorers in a league, you try to hide them defensively. <laughs> you let them get a rest on the defensive end. Jeter and Greenberg, two leading scorers in the CAA, both all-defensive team. That's impressive. It, it is, and that means that they, they love the game, and coaches love that, that defense also creates offense, and that's one of the things that really makes Jeter's game go. Jeter looking for Mayo, miscommunication, a turnover, and you're right, Jeter looks like she is pressing a little bit as we start the CAA championship round, and this is a Towson team that has never played for a CAA championship. And you can see Coach Diane Richardson right there, she was just leaning over saying, you know what, I gotta make sure that, now, will, will Jeter come out of the game because she's forcing it? You're not seeing anyone coming off the bench right now for her. Henderson can't get it going, but she tracks down the miss and a reset for Greenberg. Offensive rebounds when you are a tempo team, it really plays into your game because you get a chance to reset and reload. Brown a trip to the line for two. Foul called against Towson is their second. Well, right now, and you can see on this replay that right now the Tigers are getting beat on the off the weak side cut. We call it a banana cut because you're coming in hard. It's a diagonal. 
cut that if the weak side defense is not in the paint, you can make that cut and you can finish it. And that's right now the Tigers are not playing it well. Coach Dillon, 16th season, watching Aubrey Brown, redshirt junior, make the first. Almost eight points per game, third leading scorer on the Dragons this season. Splits a pair and into the game and with a rebound is an all-rookie team selection. And Janine Camp. She's Crossover, at, Murray, what a take. She's fouled from behind. That's exactly what Coach Richardson wants her team to do. Anytime that you can, as you turn and you see, and you're going to see in the replay right here, what a great right-to-left crossover. I know that, that Drexel does want to force Kiana Jeter to her left. Well, you know what? She just did, <laughs> and look what she did. She got to the line. Now, it wasn't an and one, but Drexel did get a foul. The quickness of the guards by Towson is just amazing when you watch them play. And Hugh Murray, she's been pretty amazing for this Towson Tigers team. Double figures in 11 games, back-to-back -back games in the CAA tournament. She has reached the 10-point mark and gets her team within two. Well, I asked Coach Richardson, I said, hey, who's your toughest player? Who's one and when the chips are down? What are you on over the She said, oh, Q Murray. No question, Q Murray. And she's showing that right now, Scott. I just. You know, when you when you have players on the floor going after it like she she does like she did on that play, that can really be infectious. That can really get your team going. And right now, defensively, especially on the weak side, the Tigers have to tighten it up a little bit. Murray switched to point guard just because Coach Richardson needed to fill a role on the team. She needed a point guard. Murray did so and led the league in assists. And how about that for bench points? Anna Ferrario, the sophomore, at eight points yesterday in a CAA high. 23 minutes and keeps it going for the Dragons in the championship round. Well, I think that if they're saying if uh, if the uh, Dragons are going to, uh, I'm sorry, if the Tigers are going to attack hard, we're going to do it as well. And what they just did on this possession, Scott, they went into a bit of a, a, a zone. It looked like a, a matchup zone. And Denise Dillon did say, we're going to try a lot of different looks at this at this team, throw a lot of different looks, because Q Murray is so smart and can take it off the dribble very well. Turnover for Towson. They had 27 turnovers yesterday in a 21-point win. And, like, right, and that that type of thing is is in that some of those turnovers as well were were not very good turnovers. They were east-west turnovers. If you're going to turn over that much, you better be going to the basket. Murray going to the basket there, and a blink of an eye from rebound to the other end of the floor can go Q Murray. It was Camp who started. You're looking at her there. The freshman all-rookie team selection. Five rebounds per game for Camp and only 13 minutes of action. You're going to see her in and out with uh, sort of tandem with uh, Maya Lee. Uh, Coach Richardson said that, that, that we really believe we got the experience with Lee as a senior and the freshman strength and, and uh, ability in the paint of Camp. Camp follows her shot. She's the biggest player on the floor. Makes it a little easier to rebound when you're a 6'5 freshman from Portsmouth, Virginia, as Camp is. And they got their own offensive rebound, as you said, with, with Camp. And it allows them to sort of see what they can do. And, and uh, as we've talked about, they want to attack the rim. There's Sean. Four points off the bench for the senior. Well, you already mentioned about bench points, Scott. This is huge in a championship game. It bodes well for both teams that you have players coming off the bench feeling comfortable enough to make some big shots. Final shot perhaps of the first quarter. Ferrari you can't get it to go and a foul will send Nikki Metzl to the free throw line with 13.3. Haven't really, and we'll see this again. Nice right to, uh, left to right crossover and a little fade away. I mean, to, to do that, as we talked about coming off the bench, that's great stuff. Now, Nikki Metzl's at the foul line. We, we really haven't talk, called her number that much so far today. But boy, did we yesterday in the semifinal. I mean, she, she matched her, her, her high, her career high uh, with 24 points. But she was big from the foul line. She was eight for 10. From the line, four for four late, hit two technical foul shots, and just really did a nice job. And you know, neat thing about her is her mother played at UConn and was the part of the graduating class, Gina Oriama's first graduating class in 1986. So there's some uh, basketball bloodlines in that family. Her mom was 
Gino's first senior captain when he got to UConn, and uh, the rest is history, you could say. And her daughter making the family proud. Drexel up by four, 10 seconds for Jeter. They double, forcing a pass to end the first quarter. A misfire, and Drexel will head to the bench with a 16-12 lead after 10 minutes of CAA Championship basketball action. The fun just getting started here at the Bob Carpenter Center. Quarter number two coming up. It's Drexel Towson from Newark. A four-point lead for the Drexel Dragons up on the Towson Tigers that set it down to the sideline and Matt Janis. Matt, take it away. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. We we're listening into the huddle. Diane Richardson imploring her team to take Drexel off the bounce. Now she said you got to be mindful of which defense they're in. They're switching a lot, zone and man-to-man. -man. But in man, we should be able to take them to the rim every single time was Richardson's repeated message. She also thought that they need to move without the ball against the zone. Otherwise, they're going to get stuck waiting deep in the shot clock and end up having to settle for jumpers. And her big thing was when they run a double at Jeter, an immediate ball reversal should open up driving lanes on the weak side one last message for a team slow down inside you should be able to get the ball to the basket thanks Matt great stuff because being able to take them off the bounce is exactly that's Towson's game they need to do that and they need to do it early and often now on the other end Bailey Greenberg is deciding that she is the player of the year and this is why I'm the player of the year both Basket's going hard to her left, Scott. How do you stop that? I mean, going to her left hand, she seems almost unguardable. She's done that twice so far today. There has not been very good help side defense by the Tigers right now. That is a problem because if, if when she puts it on the floor, there should be somebody else there to help, and there has not been. This is Drexel's largest lead. They led by as many as four a couple of times in the first quarter, led by four as we went to break. And now Brown... A foul on the floor as she drove. First foul for Towson this quarter. Well, the foul was called by Jennifer Razek. We've got a great official group here today. And Jennifer, what she called there was the, the, the uh, impeding advantage, disadvantage. The other two are uh, Karen Prito and Eric Brewton, all of them with NCAA uh, and WNBA under their belts. Great crew, as we've had all week. Here in Delaware, call the action. Again, the weak side cuts by the Dragons. Very well done. Jeter for the defensive stop and a steal for the Towson Tigers. And that's the first time help came around to help to, to stop that cut going through, and the Tigers were able to get a turnover, Scott. Now the match the, the matchup zone that Matt was talking about, that is the movement. That is exactly what they need to do. And Q Murray pulled it back, was able to, to see that it was the matchup zone, and finally got Jeter under control in the corner. Jeter needed that one, you had a feeling. Had not scored yet. An open look out of three gets it to go. Maybe that will get her going and missed her first five shots of the championship game. Now the Towson crowd on their feet as Murray picks up the defense. Brown forces one up off the mark and a rebound after a defensive stop by Towson. In terms of geography, besides Delaware, these are the two closest teams to this arena, so their fans have traveled well, making some noise. Offensive foul, though, as Towson can't take advantage of the momentum. Wow, wow, and uh, Mayo, I'd love to see this replay as she turns. Yeah, she turned, she put her left shoulder down and that was well done by Nikki Metzl. She, she was able to take it. She got her feet there, Scott, and then went up hard and went down hard as Mayo went through her. Mayo was looking to attack. Drexel's fans, about, an, about a 45 minute trip north to Drexel, about an hour drive south to Townsend, so an easy commute the Bob Carpenter Center today for these fans that have come to cheer on their squads. Drexel won 10 years ago. 
Towson has never been to the NCAA tournament. That's what's on the line today for both of these teams. A long range three for Hendrickson. Give her another, her second triple of the day. And that was the first change of defense by the Tigers. They went to a zone, a 2-3. Hendrickson said, hey, I, I, this is my type of defense. I'm going to take it. And even though it was two or three steps outside the arc, she was able to nail it, Scott. Back to six for Drexel. Hendrickson scored 13 points per game in the month of January. Didn't do much scoring the rest of the season, but put it on today. And Mayo, she scored all season long. Second leading scorer for the Tigers at 14 points per game. And that was created by another good play by Kiana Jeter. She didn't force it. First couple minutes of the game in the first quarter, she was forcing the ball. This time, she was able to pump and dish. Four-point lead for the Dragons. Player of the year with the basketball. Six to shoot. Washington's got to create with three. Up and on her move to set herself up for a triple back iron. A rebound by Mayo. Really like the chess match right now. Both coaches are doing a very nice job changing the defenses. That time they were all over Hendrickson. They're saying, you know, Coach Steve Rich was saying, we're not going to let her get that three again. Mayo in the right spot. Two in a row for the junior. Loose balls, anything in the paint is what the Tigers want. Both as a post and the guards, they want to attack, Scott. Back to two as Townsend gets four in a row thanks to the all CA second team selection. Washington stepping up and Bacon battling for a rebound. Coach Dillon telling us that Bacon would be a difference maker in this game off the bench, giving some good minutes. At this stage of the season, you need the bench to come in, and both teams are doing it so far in this first half. Beautiful look inside, Metzel with the finish. That's the tempo offense I'm talking about, Scott. It is such a nice offense for the weak side cuts. It's all a read and react, and right there, the Tigers, again, are not playing the weak side very well on defense. Nikki Metzl double figures in 11 games this year. Three in a row for her coming in to this contest. Jeter, bang, give her another one as Kiana Jeter is starting to heat up. That was a nice fade. That was a, a screen set by Mayo. And what she did, she just read it. Kiana read it, went faded to the left wing, was able to get a nice look. Her and Bailey Greenberg, the two leading scorers in the CAA. And they're doing that. So far in this contest, both with six. Henderson's got six. Make it nine. <laughs> Again, a great read by the Dragons. And obviously, Scott, both teams are executing right now. And it's really pretty good defense by both, but just players are making shots. Hendrickson, a two-time CAA Rookie of the Week selection. Having a great championship round, so is Nakaya Mayo coming off of her 22-point performance yesterday. That was really pretty good defense, honestly. <laughs> but she, again, players right now are stepping up. But the, the tempo right now, I really feel this is a Drexel tempo, though. They are getting to walk it up. They're getting to run their plays. Metzl Lee coming at us. You see the effort, the energy from both of these squads. And it's going to be a fight to the finish, that's for sure, as we take a timeout here in the second quarter of the CAA Women's Basketball Championship. Hendrickson has been hot from deep. Drexel leads by two. A 26-24 advantage for the Drexel Dragons. It's a championship round. You got to bring energy. You got to bring fight. And that's what we have here in the first half. And when you have your center, Maya Lee, coming out, both of them going hard for the ball and creating that, that turnover, that's the type of thing. And you got Nikki Metzl, her teammates helping her up. That's, it is the energy that you need, and that can really pump up a team when you've got your two centers going down on the floor like that, Scott. The two-seated Drexel Dragons have a two-point lead. Matt Janis had his ear to Denise Dillon's huddle. 
One other thing that can pump up a team, Scott, their head coach getting all over the club. Denise Dillon did exactly that. She said, pass and move. Way too much dribbling. She said it no fewer than five times. When we do it, we're getting opening shots like those last two trips. When we don't, which is most of the time, you're playing right into their hands. She said, decent job on defense. Good job rebounding. But it all comes back to pass and move. That's how they'll be successful offensively. Thank you, Matt. Absolutely, and when that ball is on the floor and there's too much dribbling, as Matt's saying, that's when turnovers occur. That's when deflections happen. So that's why Denise Dillon wants to keep the ball moving on passes like this. A steal for Jeter. She had 79 on the season to lead the league. On the breakout, Thurshawn. Can't get the roll. Missed opportunity for the Tigers to tie the score at 26. On the other end, rookie to rookie. Hendricks in Washington, and Kashana will bring it back out to the player of the year, Greenberg, a rebound for Mayo. Uh, I'll tell you what, I really like Kashana Washington pulling it back out, but then what happens? She gives it to the to Bailey Greenberg, who then takes a quick shot. I think that uh, Denise Dillon wanted more at that possession to work it, to get the tempo back. To the rim, Mayo has 12, and the score is tied for the first time since tip. That time it was player to player, and what Coach Diane Richardson was saying in the last huddle that Matt talked about was that when it's player to player, attack, and that's what Mayo did. Mayo double figures in 21 of her last 22 games. Didn't get there in the quarterfinal round, but she has been so consistent for Coach Richardson's team. Under two minutes left in quarter number two. Brown being the aggressor, an offensive foul, too aggressive. Great, great defense by Q Murray. And you're going to see it here on this replay. She's moving her feet. Brown, obviously, what she did on that play is what she should have done. She had a small guard on her. She should take it inside. But Q was just too quick for her, Scott. She was able to get her feet there, and now Brown's going to take a break. Brown's got two fouls, first player with two in this basketball game. It's the first foul this quarter on the Drexel Dragons, a clean game thus far, and we're tied at 26, a chance for Towson to take their very first lead of the game. So who do they go to? The second team, all CAA selection. Mayo wanted a foul there, didn't get it. It leads to numbers for the Dragons. For you? Good decision right now. And Holder just came down with her hand or else it would have been a block shot and no foul. She swung at the shooter and that's what's being described here right now, I'm sure. Well, Coach Diane Richardson is really working the officials hard over there. She's working Karen Fredo very hard saying, what did she do on this? And we're gonna see it right now on the replay. Love the fact that she came home, that, the, that she attacked the basket and then you know, any time you break the plane defensively by bringing your arm down, that's going to be a foul. So I, I thought that was a good call. And now that Diane Richardson is hearing it from the official, she'll be able to adjust, have her team adjust to it. Kayla Bacon makes one of two. She had a season high eight points so a week ago against Townsend, coming off the bench and giving the lead back to Drexel. Well, I think it's ball, ball fake created that play. She was able to freeze the defense. So, you know, you got to make sure you stay low and close out and don't rise up because that play wouldn't have happened if the defense could have stayed on ball. Jeter, a slow start. She's gotten herself going in the second quarter. But Mayo has had the hot hand. A reach in foul. I, I understand Hannah Nihill trying to help. But you know what, when you got 6'3 going hard, you better get there with your body. If you put just an arm in, that's going to be a foul. And it was that time around for Nihil, first of the day. For the sophomore, rookie of the year a season ago. And that gives also another, a, a new 30 to the Tigers. Because they're really trying to find some of the mismatches and attack. Mayo with three ball, in and out. Right there by Nihil. Now they have more than they've over 20 seconds to run their offense, Scott. The point guard from Cardinal O'Hara High School will operate. 
Now 11 to shoot. Bacon's got five. Nye Hill with the blow by and the runner too strong. Holder a rebound and the Tigers can take the last shot if they want to. Holder right past the defender in the first lead of the first half to the Towson Tigers. That's a secondary break right there. They didn't have the primary. They waited. They got a good look. Four seconds. Three for Ferrario. She's not going to get a shot off, and the Tigers, who trail by six in the first quarter, will take a lead into the locker room. That type of pace in the last two to three minutes, Scott, that was Towson Tiger pace. They really seized the pace, and they know what they had to do. Let's send it over to Matt Janis, who's with Denise Dillon. Coach, I know you were looking for a little bit more movement without the basketball yes. and ball movement on the offensive end. What's the key to getting that done in the second half? Well, it's uh, knowing, connecting down that end or down this end. Uh, being on the same page, uh, moving the basketball and then moving our bodies, taking what they're giving us. But uh, a lot of standing around the three-point line and uh, expecting people to create shots. On the defensive end, it seemed like you guys were pretty solid there for the first 15 minutes. You feel like you're, you're on pretty good footing to get back that direction? Well, we had to mix it up a little bit. I think taking advantage of the one-on-one -on -one coverage, which they can uh, Our weak side help has to Thanks a lot. Good. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you to Coach Denise Dillon. It's the half here with Towson up 28-27 over Drexel. Coming up, we'll talk with the CAA Commissioner Joe D'Antonio. We'll also take a look at a talented all-CAA first team, including two players on the floor today. That's all coming up and more as we take a break from the Bob Carpenter Center in Newark, the second half to determine who gets to dance from the CAA. It's the CAA Championship from Newark, Delaware. What more would you expect but a tight game at the half. Towson up 28-27 over Drexel. Coming out of the locker room, our sideline reporter Matt Janis spoke with the head coach of the Towson Tigers, Diane Richardson. Matt, what you have to say? Overall, pretty pleased, Scott, with what her team was able to do in that first half. She did have a couple of quick critiques. She wants to make sure they do a better job identifying shooters. Now, she joked most of Drexel's team is capable of shooting the basketball, but we've got to know who the best shooters are, make sure we hug them and get out on them and try to take away those outside looks. She likes the rotation, thought they could do a little bit better job rebounding the basketball and then turning those rebounds into transition opportunities. On the offensive end, thinks the balance is good, wants to continue continue to try to take them off the dribble. Those opportunities are there, took advantage of some of them, maybe not quite enough. Thinks if they do in the second half, they've got a pretty good chance to be champs. Thank you, Matt. You can see Coach Richardson right there. She is one half away from sending Towson to the NCAA tournament for the very first time. On the other end, you saw Denise Dillon. Drexel has been runner up in the CAA tournament four of the last seven tournaments they would like to hold the trophy here in Newark today a one-point game as we start the third quarter of action Scott Klaskin alongside Jody Patrick and the adjustments that have to be made really I think by the Dragons is playing a little bit more zone mixing up the man the player to player and zone because you cannot give you cannot give Towson a chance to get a rhythm especially against player to player Step back, Jeter almost got it. Mayo an offensive board, she leads the team and is second in the CAA in that category. Well, as, as Matt said, that Coach Diane Richardson said, we need to do a little bit more rebounding, and uh, Mikaya Mayo right there is listening to her coach. And what a bond they have, Mayo and Coach Richardson. She wasn't used much with the former staff. Her and Richardson had a rapport when she came in last year, and Mayo was all CAA as a sophomore, did it again. As a junior, Dershon a miss. Jeter crashing, ball loose. Love the hustle, but a foul is going to be called. And it'll go against wow. Metzel. It was Jeter trying to reach around. Metzel must have crashed into the point guard. Well, good things happen to teams when you hustle, and this was a hustle play. Jeter was just going. Now, I, 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 that's a tough one right there, but I think Metzel, if she hadn't leaned back, I don't think there would have been a call, but hey, 
You know, basketball gods take took care of it right there, Scott, the saying, with the turnover. The saying goes, ball don't lie, I believe, is Aubrey <laughs> Brown who gets the interception right away after the first foul was called against Metzl in the first on Drexel this half. And you can see Key Washington just held the ball on her hip for a good five, six seconds right there. Again, they want to seize the pace and take advantage. And what they did right there, they read the defense and they got the ball to Bailey Greenberg, who, as you had noted, for only three for, she was only took four shots in the first half. So now she's four for five. I think you're gonna see them getting the ball a little bit to her a little bit more. That's great, Coach. You come out of locker room with a play design for your first possession of the second half, a traveling violation against Townsend. We'll give it back to the Dragons. And let's take another look. Very nicely done. I, you love that high low right there. And Brown really knows that when Bailey Greenberg is cut into the basket. She's gonna have a, 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 someone on her who's really not gonna be a guard switched on her. That's a mismatch, get her the ball. Bailey Greenberg, the player of the year. Her father, Chip, played at LaSalle, was the leading scorer his senior year at LaSalle. And now she's the leading scorer in another Philadelphia. Right here, Bailey Greenberg, as you had noted, that she's got, she has to get the ball in her hands. Player of the year, already had one good look going to the paint. Get her the ball more, and that's what Denise Dillon is doing. And what a big jump for Bailey Greenberg to go from second team all CAA last year to player of the year. That's a rarity. Usually there's somebody in the waiting on that first team after someone graduates, you're ready to win player of the year. She made a big improvement, six points per game improvement, in fact, from her sophomore to junior campaign. And the fact you, what you just said, she's only a junior. You know, that happens That's sometimes scary. junior to senior year. It happens. It's rare to do what she's done going into a junior year. Three-point advantage for Drexel. They led almost all of the first half. The final basket of the second quarter gave Towson their only lead as Murray drives. Tough angle. And now Washington cut off by Jeter. She'll wait for her teammates. Great ball pressure right there by Q. Murray. And you know Key Washington really looking to get rid of the ball when she can with that type of pressure. But what that pressure did, Scott, it created a fast shot, a quick shot by the Dragons. Fast one on the other end. Jeter's there. Now Brown. She doesn't have the numbers. Good decision by Washington to pull it back. Greenberg was adjusting her headband, wasn't ready to catch the ball <laughs> in the post. I thought she had position. And, uh, you know, those uh, those uh, hair malfunctions, you can't have those happen in, in moments like that. Not in the championship round. <laughs> And now it's under 10 seconds. Brown a desperation three as the shot clock is winding down. Not a good possession, mm -hmm. I think that you, you can say. And, and you know that the high octane that Towson wants to do is exactly that, a great draw and dish to Mayo. Mayo adds to her total. We talked about this in the open, the pace of this game. Whoever can dictate it might have a trophy presentation in 15 minutes. And in the last three minutes of the first half, it was Towson's pace. Right now, it's both teams really, I, I, I think, have, have played really the pace they want. And now you need what you need are, are tough stops, but absolutely great draw and dish. And the, and the no call, I think that Metzl was trying to, to, pu to pull that offensive. You know, not, that's not going to happen in a championship game. Greenberg. In double figures once again, 29 of 32 games this season. She had seven, only three games this year, and she not reached the 10-point mark, seven against Towson on March 9th, but that wasn't a 33-point win. They didn't need her efforts as much. That was where the bench got stronger. And uh, now yesterday, she was fifth, she had 15 and 15, a nice double-double. And uh, so she knows how to rebound as well as score. Two-point lead for the Dragons, who trailed by one at the half. Almost halfway through the third quarter. Mayo looking for her shot, and a jump ball arrow to Drexel as Teresa Kratzikova and Mayo get tangled. And you can tell the referees are talking to him a little bit because it was, you know, hey, as a coach, I, I always say, when there's a jump ball, you still end up with that ball in your hands after the whistle, so you still do a rip out. So what Mayo did, Nikai Mayo did right there was 
was a, a rip out after the whistle, and the referees just wanted to step in and quiet it down a little bit. Denise Dillon getting her players rotated in and out. Kratzikova played nine minutes in the semifinal round. Role player on this team, but giving Metzl a breather right now. Greenberg, 0 of 2 from three-point range, now 0 of 3, and giving Towson a chance to tie or take the lead with a triple. Well, if you notice, there were, as uh, Jeter had that ball, two players came. Now, it wasn't just Washington. Greenberg was there to help the prime stop the primary fast break, Scott. But then she pulled it back and then attacked again and was able to go to the line. Kiana Jeter, she's just so good at being able to draw contact and get something up towards the rim. It's hard to stay in front of that. I just, I love the way she decided not to force it because Scott, in the first quarter, she forced it a lot. And now, you know, that, she's a redshirt sophomore. She's uh, from a junior college, uh, Florida Gulf Go uh, Gold Coast. And uh, Coach Richardson told me yesterday how much she enjoyed recruiting her. Uh, she was raised by her grandmother and uh, had a lot of trips scheduled for Xavier, Ole Miss. She was going, looking at a lot of big schools, and then canceled after she visited Towson. She said, hey, this is where I want to go. So she's one who, who really enjoys coaching and uh, by uh, Diane Richardson. And still a chance to play on the big stage if her team can win today. Kratzikova shot blocked by Jeter, but a foul is going to be called. Got her on the body. Kiana Jeter, she does more than just score. She is the CAA all-defensive team representative. We're tied at 32. Free throws coming up after that foul when we return. A tie score here in Newark, Delaware. Towson and Drexel nodded at 32 all. This is not the first time these two teams have had a close game. Back in January, it was Nakaya Mayo at the buzzer to give Towson the victory. That shot right there snapped a 19-game losing streak against the Dragon. Great pass by Ryan Holder. She's able to get it to Mayo. Aubrey Brown was defending Mayo. Tried to pull the offensive foul, but it nothing, not, not with five seconds left in the game. And uh, she kissed it off the glass. The score was 54-50, I'm sorry, 54-53 at that point. So it was a 55-54 win for the Tigers. And you can see that brought a little energy to the, uh, to the Tigers. Mayo, the leading scorer in this one. What a treat we'd have if we can get a finish like that today in the championship game. Kratzikova on the free throw line. And lead back for the Dragons. There's Denise Dillon. Diane Richardson was talking to her team on the sideline. Matt Jane is telling us that she loves what they're doing defensively, a very encouraging huddle for the Tigers. Likes this uh, coming out of the foul shots. Some full court pressure, chewing some time off the shot clock. No, uh, tr no traps, and now it's going into sort of a, a matchup zone. So again, it's really good decision making defensively by these coaches. Ball will stay with Townsend. And Coach Dylan Thomas, she was going to mix up the defenses throughout the game. We've seen it here today. Well, you have to do it. It's the third time you've played each other during the season. You've got to show something different. Towson just one of eight in this quarter, but a bucket there, a dime dropped by Kiana Jeter. Well, that was that was a, that was the dish to Maya Lee. So it really was an un, a very smart play by Jeter to get the defense up and then a dish. Washington, all rookie team selection, a smooth stroke. She has come on so strong at the tail end of this season, double figures in her last four games. She had 14 against the Tigers just a week ago. Her defense right now on Q Murray as well is going to be important. Now they're playing this, this matchup zone right now. Again, trying to, to slow things up. And Jeter's finding some gaps out of it though. Lee, another rebound, her and Mayo. The top rebounding duo in the CAA, both top five rebounders in regular season play. What this defense does, it stops the gaps for the drives, and it makes makes you be more of an outside jumper team, and that's really not what Towson wants to do. Brown brings the ball up the floor, her team up by two. This game has gone back and forth here in the third. 
Now, Towson did mix up their defenses a little bit in the first half, too, but both the, all of the second half so far, it's been player to player. Nice transition defense right there by the Dragons. Now they've come back to their player to player. Henderson on defense. Jeter in the lane, a miss. Lee, another offensive rebound. Goes up strong and gets fouled. That's three straight possessions for Maya Lee crashing the offensive glass. She's the transfer from Old Dominion. No box out at all. And, you know, that's one of the things that Coach Diane Richardson had said that she really felt they could do some damage in the paint. And offensive board, that's how you do it. I also had the chance to uh, coach against Maya Lee in high school. She played at McLean High School, Scott. And uh, boy, it was always tough playing against her. We just knew we had to get a body or two on her. And she really did a nice job in, in Northern Virginia high, public high school basketball. You coached against Diane Richardson as well. How was that for you? That's got to be a treat when she was at Riverdale Baptist. Oh, gosh, it was very hard. And talk about 94-50. Oh, <laughs> the Riverdale Baptist teams were just phenomenally uh, conditioned and coached by uh, Diane Richardson. Won a couple national championships at the high school level, did Diane Richardson at Riverdale Baptist. And she brought that pace of play for the Towson Tigers. A strip, a steal, ball loose, Lee control. So Jeter's getting her hands on a lot of balls right now defensively. Now that shot was one on four. I, I not think that I don't think that was a good one. We, that you had the Dragons, four players in position to rebound the ball. Metzel in the game, 20 point performances in the first two rounds for Nikki Metzel. She's got six today. Again, tempo offense by the Dragons, doing a nice job. But it's getting under 10 seconds again. Five on the drive for Metzl. And the shot blocker extraordinaire, Lee, sends it out of bounds. Three to shoot when Drexel inbounds his basketball. I love that no call right there on the baseline, too. I love that no call because Lee was just straight up. Now, there was a little contact. But that was the principle of verticality. She had her arms straight up. She was off her feet. Metzl trying to beat the buzzer. Cannot, and that's a solid... 30 seconds of defense for Towson. That was a fabulous defensive set right there. Now, right, what Q Murray is pulling the ball back, Scott, trying to see what the defense is, and it's gone back to player to player. Another switch by Denise Dillon. Murray on the crossover, into the paint. She sliced through and drew contact. Q Murray, the redshirt junior from Baltimore. Absolutely love this decision by Q Murray because she saw, after she squared up, she saw that the defense was not in position. And that's why that foul was called, because there was a reach. I don't know how much arm there was on it, Scott, but the defense was out of position on that. Murray, 138 assists on the season, led the CAA. Number two, Jess Janko lost yesterday. Denise Dillon and the Drexel <laughs> Dragons. And uh, Denise Dillon had a few questions about that call as well. Well, Eric Bruton, uh, what, what she was doing there is she's trying to, to get calls down the road. And uh, even when, I think he was happy when the ball started coming down because he had to go to the baseline. So he had to leave her <laughs> after that foul shot. But yeah, coaches are, uh, really do need to, to get the, the decision making from the officials and, and then understand that they need to move on as well. A lot of respect the way of Denise Dillon, 16th year, fourth leading coach in terms of wins in CAA history. And after that miss, an offense rebound will send Washington back to run the offense. Under a minute here in the third quarter, and it really has been the pace of both teams throughout, half and half really. Some running, some set up. Greenberg, CAA player of the year. Gets her shot blocked by Nakaya Mayo. Now Jeter's on the run. No numbers. Double team. Third shot, an open look. Connects. Great decision making by Q Murray. She had a shot, but she saw Dershawn in the corner for a tray. Danielle Dershawn with a big bucket to extend the lead to three for Towson. Final shot of the third quarter. Metzl 
big basket as we head to the fourth quarter of action here in Newark, Delaware. Towson led by one at the half. They'll have a one-point lead heading into the fourth quarter of action. We've got a good one for you. The CAA Championship at the Bob Carpenter Center. Drexel, Towson, a chance to dance. Ten minutes left here in Newark. Fourth quarter of action coming up. Towson up 39, 38. Only four active teams in the CAA have won the CAA championship. James Madison with 12. As you look at the champions as of late, Elon back-to-back, -back, James Madison and Delaware. Drexel won in 2009. And Towson has never won the tournament. They never played for a championship. They're looking for a title today. Let's send it to the sideline and Matt Janis. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Denise Dillon's message to her team, A, stay calm, we're in good shape. B, get the ball inside. When you get it inside, you've got to use the head fake. Towson's trying to block everything, slow down, show them the basketball, you'll get to the free throw line. But she said, guys, we have to play inside out. Thank you, Matt. Ten minutes left of this one. You saw the past champions. Drexel has lost in the championship round in four of the last seven tournaments. They are not looking for a silver medal today. No, and, and I guess the silver medal is that WNIT. You know, they're guaranteed. Either team, you know, the losing team is guaranteed, uh, you know, going on in the postseason. But you know which dance they want to be at, and, it, and it's, the, it's the big one. So how to do it right now, I got to tell you, after the, three, the third quarter, wow, great play right there by Metzl. Oh, I'm sorry, that was Ferrari. Ferrari, I, that was well done. It, she was still out of bounds. Holder was still out of bounds on that. So a turnover to start the fourth quarter. Drexel gets the basketball back. Pretty clean game for a team that turned the ball over 27 times yesterday. Just eight in the first three quarters for the Tigers. The one, the one stat that I think right now is really hurting uh, the Dragons is that they're getting out-rebounded, Scott, 28-22. I think that the rebounding is going to be key here in the fourth quarter. Towson was plus 12 on the glass yesterday in the semifinal round. A Jeter starts, stops, starts again, and the jump ball arrow for the Drexel Dragons. That's the second jump ball Drexel has won today. Really like Jeter trying to create, as you can see here, and there's a double team on her. That pass was just a little bit behind Lee. Anytime she puts the ball down on the floor, Scott, two players are running at her, and Coach Denise Dillon did talk about that prior to the game. She said, we will, we will throw two people at Jeter. We need the ball to get out of her hands. But the, the challenge is sometimes with her, she's so quick, it's hard to throw two people at her. She's got eight in this one. A slight pause to reset the shot clock. Drexel has trailed by three. That's her largest deficit. Towson was down six in the first half. Now a one-point lead for the four seed as they go to Greenberg. Metzl, deep two, didn't get enough on it. Nice inside-outside. That's what Coach Denise Dillon was talking about from Matt Janis. He's saying that's what needs to happen, but not enough legs in that shot. This could be that three games in three days type thing. You got to get, get to bend those knees a little bit more. Drexel played an overtime game less than 24 hours ago to advance the championship against Northeastern. And as the ball goes down, Mayo on the attack, 14 points, six rebounds for the junior from the Bronx. Now only 11 seconds left on the shot clock. She doesn't need a whole lot of time, so quick. <laughs> Let's see what she can create with seven. Now four, a spin, stellar defense by Washington. Now numbers. Two on one for Brown. Behind the back pass and the CAA player of the year does the rest. <laughs> wow, Auburn Brown. That is the way to get your fans hyped up. Some razzle dazzle for Aubrey Brown who leads the team in assists, gets one there and gets the lead back for Drexel Mayo. And an offensive foul, Drexel saw her coming. Wow, I think at this point, 
I could see, I could see Townsend taking a shot, taking a timeout, and Aubrey Brown behind the back to the player of the year who finishes it. Townsend calls a timeout, and I think it's a good one. You get a, a play like that at one end, then you get a score, a, a charge at the other way. You've got to make sure you stop the momentum. It's been a close one the entire way. Seven minutes and 33 seconds to determine a champion in the CAA. I'm Scott Klasky with Jody Patrick, Matt Janis on the sideline, and Bailey Greenberg. She's been in the paint this entire game. The CAA Player of the Year, 11 points. And that's what is happening in the huddles right now, too. The coaches are saying, get the ball inside. Denise Dillon wants him to pump fake, to head fake, get the defense off their feet, and finish at the rim. That's going to make a difference in Auburn Brown. Right hand behind the back to Bailey Greenberg, the player of the year, and the finish. Now on the Townsend huddle side, very important that the team can execute, and they need to, as, as Coach Diane Richards was saying, hey guys, take a deep breath. Let's enjoy this moment. We need to execute. Execution is going to make the difference at the end of this game. Drexel perhaps an advantage down the stretch, having been here in the championship game before a poised team. In they go to Greenberg, and she certainly has an advantage every time she touches the rock. Well, obviously, from Matt Janice's report on the sideline in the huddle at, uh, for the uh, Dragons, get the ball inside, and they did that, and Bailey Greenberg was able to finish. Lead back. Or extended for Drexel after the two and a traveling violation for Towson. You know, right now, too much dribbling. I think that the ball movement is what helped, has helped the Tigers, right? And they are right now just putting their head down and dribbling right into some double teams by the Dragons. Five turnovers over the last five possessions for Towson, who had otherwise played a very clean game, especially for how fast they like to go on offense. And especially knowing they did turn the ball over 27 times yesterday, they've been doing a very good job, but now the Dragons are really putting pressure on the ball and forcing some of those turnovers. Three-point lead for Drexel. Five to shoot. Metzl stepped out of bounds and a turnover for the Dragons. I like the decision by Metzl, but the baseline, I, in talking with Diane Richardson about their defensive principles, she said, we force baseline. We want that baseline. It's a defender. And at that, in that play, that worked for the Tigers. Towson averages 68 points per game. Not on pace to get there against the nation's best defense. Drexel allows fewer than 50 points per game defensively. More ball movement right now instead of dribbling, so the Tigers are doing a better job with that. But I tell you what, the Dragons are really reading it well. Murray setting herself up. Big, good players, big players make big plays, Scott, and that's one, and she's a first team all CAA -er, and she proved it with that shot. A lot of confidence on that shot. When you go by one letter as your first name, <laughs> you know you've got the confidence to step up and make a big play as Q Murray did there. Again, out of bounds for Drexel and another turnover as they have a one-point lead, and here's Q. That was a great right-to-left crossover and the finish. Well done by Q. Murray. Now she'll walk the ball up the floor. Four and a half assists per game on the season. She's been in double figures in each of the last three. Bounce pass. And... Maya Lee wasn't ready for it. You saw her raise her hand to Murray saying, maybe that's a lob. I've got the height advantage. Diane Richardson, though, clapping on her team. Trails by one. Well, and, and she also knows, I think we're having a little shot clock, shot clock issue right now. Any stoppage right now, Scott, I think helps Drexel because this is the, they want a tempo. You can see that the, the turnover's right there. That's, that's really what... The, the, the Dragons want, they want to be able to force some things, but they want, when they have the ball offensively, they want to be able to walk it up. Washington doing just that. Here's Metzl, she's had an outstanding tournament and a clutch shot for the junior from Princeton, New Jersey. She had a chance to put the ball down twice, Scott. No help came, no dig outs, nothing. So if that's the way Towson's gonna play it, you're gonna see that type of isolation again. 
Her first career start came in the championship game last year. Remember, we covered it against Elon for an injured Sarah Woods. And now back and playing well. Mayo misses, trying to get it back, reached in, and is whistled for the foul. A 44-41 point lead for the Drexel Dragons over the Towson Tigers. We've got under five minutes left to play. Metzl trying to send her team to the NCAA tournament. Less than five minutes to determine the CAA champion here in Newark, Delaware. Dragons up by three. Let's welcome back in Matt Janis on the sideline. Funny you should say that, Scott. That was the message from Denise Dillon. Five minutes, 4.49 to be precise. She said, hey, remember the mile run that we all have to do over and over again during preseason conditioning? That's what we are away from a CAA championship. That's why we do all of that in the offseason. You all did it. You know you can. That's what we're doing here. On the other end, Diane Richardson saying, guys, we're executing okay. We're just a little bit late getting to our spots. We have to get there about a second sooner. If we do, we have some opportunities to make some plays. Execution good, just the timing has to improve. Thank you, Matt. That's a great message from an amazing head coach in Denise Dillon, motivating her team up by three. A turnover, though, won't help finish that mile, although they'll hang on to a three-point advantage right now. <laughs> wow. And the opportunity right there is lost for the Dragons up three. They would have had a chance to go up five or six if they could have done something with that possession. So that's a definite lost possession. See if the Tigers can take advantage of it. They want the ball in the hands of their leading scorer, Cheater, strong. And almost too strong on that shot. And then to player of the year, Bailey Greenberg comes down, comes down with the rebound, Scott. Under four we go. Drexel is led by as many as six. They can get there on this possession with a three. Again, they're taking their, their, a lot of patience right here. Off the foot of Greenberg. Third shot on the run to Jeter. Has Murray, but draws contact. And the foul is just a second on Drexel. So unless they say Jeter was in the act of shooting, it'll be an inbound pass. We'll take another no, look. I, I think it was, uh, it was not shooting. Boy, so she was lucky. I almost thought there could have been a travel on that as well. But boy, that's the type of, that's what they want to do. They want to stretch the court and be able to finish, but they got, at least got the foul on that one. Now up to three fouls. Still a while, of, and that was on Washington. That off the ball, but boy, you can tell they're trying hard to keep Jeter from touching that ball right now, Scott. Quick hands by Hendrickson, and Towson will have to find another angle for the inbound. Looking for Dershon in the corner right there to try to stretch it. Hugh Murray has to come all the way to the corner now. The angles are a little different now with the inbounds. Dershon's been really solid off the bench. Seven points in this one. Lee draws contact off the window and in after the no call. I, I, I tell you what, I love that no call. Just love it because there's going to be contact right now. And you cannot die. You cannot show and do any, any type of dives right now. No flops. Just got to play. Lee transferred from a team that won a lot of CAA championships. Old Dominion played 11 games there, a freshman season. Now a big part of this Towson team, a starter as a redshirt senior. Brown spinning, has the height advantage, and takes advantage to the cup. Again, no help coming in. And I think that's when Diane Richards is saying we have things coming a little bit late. That was a late rotation right there. Somebody needed to come in and try to get a, a, a pinch on the post. Drexel with an answer seemingly every time. Townsend gets it close. Dershon to Lee. Good anticipation, nearly a steal. Eight to shoot for Jeter. They reset the shot clock, wow. and that's an advantage wow. for Townsend because the shot clock was winding down, and Jeter was going to have to make a play under six. Instead, they get a stoppage, and with now seven can run something. Right, but they're not in a huddle. Drexel went quickly to their own player huddle. Townsend didn't. They just all stood with their hands on their hips, and, and uh, Jeter was over here. I was going to say, I think the shot, ooh, they put it down to six. I thought the shot clock was at seven at that point. We both looked at it thinking, okay, here it is, and then all of a sudden it went back up to 28, or to 30, then to 28. 
Murray will inbound, and you're right, no huddle to design a play here, so we'll have to get creative, and it ends up being a turnover as Metzl gets the steal. Murray tries to get it back. Washington trapped in the corner. Towson pressuring. That was a reckless inbounds pass. They, you just on The goal of an inbounds pass, got is to just get it in. And she was trying to go for the score on that to get it inside. Not the time for that type of pass. The poise of the freshman from Ontario, Washington, to initiate the offense. Now Metzl, another block from Lee. She had three in each of the first two rounds. Townsend's got to take care of the basketball. Seven turnovers this quarter alone and make it eight. Going too quick. There's, you know that phrase, be quick but don't hurry? Well, right there. I, I, Keanu Jeter is one of the quickest, if not the quickest on the court, but she hurried that play. Drexel, Towson, championship game. Towson led by one at the half. Murray trying to get into a three-point lead on the run. Q Murray gets the lead down to one for the Dragons. Got to step to the ball on the wing, especially when Q Murray is out there lurking. Drexel led by six points in the second quarter. Okay, instead of a pass, it's a handoff right there. Washington said, hey, I will come get the ball. No risks this time around. Long range stream for Greenberg is strong and Towson a chance to take a fourth quarter lead as we approach a minute. That might have been a step outside of her range. Love the fact she wanted the ball though, Scott. One minute. Towson down by a point with the basketball. Mayo changes that. A timeout by Denise Dillon and the Towson bench erupts as the Tigers go back up one. Well, we showed the last second shot earlier, a few minutes ago, that Mayo hit to win the game in January at Drexel. Well, what I loved on that play, and you're seeing it right now, is her footwork was excellent. As she came from down on the baseline, she got her feet set right away, Scott. You get your feet set right away, that's gonna help you square your shoulders up, and then when you get it, you've got a really good chance of finishing that shot. Done with a poise of a senior, and she's not one. 47-46 after that shot by Nakaya Mayo. It's been back and forth all afternoon here at the Bob Carpenter Center. I'm Scott Glasgow with Jody Patrick. It's been fun, and the final 54.9 should be an exciting finish. We are working right here with two very, very good coaches, the 2019 Coach of the Year and the 2018 Coach of the Year. In those huddles, they're getting a lot of work done defensively. You're going to see coming out the player to player for Towson. They're not going to switch. They're going to stay with their players. They're going to need a little more help side. Now, for Drexel, you're going to look. I think you're going to see Bailey Greenberg touch the ball at least once. She's the player of the year. She's their leading scorer. Now, that of course, Towson's going to try to stop that, but I think you're going to see some inside action by Drexel. The Towson Tigers can feel it. An opportunity to go to the dance for the very first time while Drexel has a chance to end a 10-year drought as we get back in action after timeout. A steal by the Tigers. Up by a point. And Towson draws a foul. It's the fourth on Drexel. Foul or out of bounds? Are they calling a foul? I thought she might have been out of bounds. But no, you're, you're right, here we go. Let's see this. Very poor inbounds pass right there by Aubrey Brown. And again, Aubrey Brown not able to secure the handle. And Brown again, third. So, wow, that's a tough possession for Aubrey Brown and the Dragons. 25 to shoot, 42 to play. Townsend with the basketball. Jeter will hold. Try to get a good look at the bottom of this clock. Obviously a high pick and roll coming up for Jeter. Step back, Jeter! <laughs> a three point lead is Towson's largest of the game with 24.5 left 
On the clock. High pick and roll by Lee. And Metzel did not step out high enough or quick enough. They decided to switch on the play. And if you're going to switch on the play, Jeter knew that. She was able to step back and obviously finish. But there was a, it was really a, a, a delayed reaction defensively by the Dragons. The Towson Tigers, about an hour south of the Bob Carpenter Center, their fans feeling an opportunity here to go dancing. The tournament opened up in the quarterfinal round after James Madison was knocked off the first number one seed to lose in the quarterfinal round. And now Towson, the four seed, up by three. They need to defend here. And Kiana Jeter, second leading scorer in the CAA with the biggest shot of her young career, the sophomore, Drexel, down by three. Now you have an opportunity to either get a quick score. You can look for the three, obviously. And you know they at this point, they might be looking for that and getting it to Bailey Greenberg. Greenberg slips, ball loose, and out of bounds it goes. Drexel could not hold on to the basketball down the stretch. And with 13.6 remaining, a timeout taken by Diane Richardson. Greenberg lost it. They were obviously going to their best player, but solid defense by Nakaya Mayo. Well, and Mayo, what she decided to do was go out and play Greenberg a little bit further because Greenberg, if you remember a minute ago, took about a 25-footer, didn't make it. But I think that's why Mayo decided, okay, I better get out there. I like the decision, Scott, of, of Greenberg attacking the basket because you need it, just need a score. You're at 24 seconds. There's a chance you can score. You're only down one. You can, you can foul at that point. There's still time to get the ball back after that. But Greenberg did not look and take that three right away because of Mayo. Mayo, an all-defensive team selection. So is Kiana Jeter, but it was her offense that gave Towson a 49-46 advantage. 13.6 as Towson advances the ball after the timeout. Drexel will look to foul. Almost got the steal. Washington pokes it away. Good, de good defense by Key Washington, and you know she's not leaving Jeter at all. They, they left her on that high pick and roll with Lee this time. And now they're going small right now. Lee is out. They're going with a small lineup. Murray will be the inbounder. Mayo. She wanted that basketball. Fifth foul on Drexel. She wanted to shoot the clutch free throws, and she'll get a chance to put Towson up by five here. And this is the change in the game from a couple years ago, going with that five fouls and no one and one. This is where I love if it was back to one and one, Scott, because there's really no drama right now on the miss. But you know, Nikaya Mayo wasn't going to yeah. give the drama anyway. <laughs> Of course she wasn't. She was saying, I, hey, I'm going to make it. Don't worry about it. But it changes the, the, the rhythm at the end. But, boy, those were nothing but net. The biggest lead of the night for Towson comes with 11.8 remaining, a two-possession lead for Towson. And let's take a look at the second leading scorer in the CAA, what she has done today, Kiana Cheater. Once again, phenomenal. This one from May over on the left, and this is the one that got her going. She had been really forcing things outside and inside. Nice draw and dish right here, back to Mayo. Mayo passed it to her. Well, she's gonna get it back to Mayo. And here, just turn, face, her footwork was good, able to finish. This is the last play when Lee gave her that screen, and Metzel came out too low, too slow. And Jeter was able to nail it, Scott. That shot that we just saw a moment ago put Towson up 49 to 46. The two free throws from Mayo makes it a two possession lead. Drexel has one timeout left if they can't inbound. They've got to go quickly. And they just have to get a score. It doesn't have to be a three. Brown doesn't connect. Ball loose, out of bounds. It'll stay with Drexel 5.7 now. Now it has to be a three. Well, it does, and I think because it, 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 when you're in, in double-figure time, you can just score a quick timeout. Now, now you got to get the three. But if, if they do have something inside, you know they'll take that as well. Brown, a three, connects with 1.6. Okay. 
keeping Drexel's hopes alive. They'll need to get a steal off the inbound or force a five second violation. It'll, hey. be, it'll be tough, but Brown at least gets it back to a two point lead as the timeout's taken on the floor. Let's take a look at Brown's three here hey, and assist from the rim. <laughs> Sometimes you need a break in a championship game. And that type of, of shot, she kept her head up and she's not happy about it at all. She, she should be happier than she was, but right now on the, uh, the full court defense that you're gonna see. Now in the second half, we have seen Drexel do some full court player to player, but they haven't been doing any run and jump, no trapping, nothing. This is gonna be a little different. They're gonna try to quickly deny, they're gonna try to deny Q, Murray and Keanu Jeter and try to get the ball into the post players and then try to quickly double that. But you also might see, Scott, a, a full court, some type of break full court and a long pass, sort of a quarterback receiver type pass too to just get the ball down deep. Denise Dillon drawing it up for the Drexel Dragons. Towson, a 51-49 lead. What an amazing game we've had this afternoon here in Newark, Delaware. Drexel beat Towson by 33 just a week ago. Towson answering the bell here. They're two seconds away as they add a couple tenths to the clock. Murray inbounds to Mayo, and it took .7 to get the foul on Mayo. Mayo calmly made two free throws on the last possession for the Tigers. Right. Well done by the Tigers, really, to get the ball in the hands of, of who they, uh, it was be Q or Kiana, but this time Nakaya, hard on the baseline, Scott. Two shots coming up. I don't think Coach Richardson would want anyone else on the free throw line than her clutch performer, Nakaya Mayo, who made a buzzer-beating shot back in January to beat Trexel. She makes them both, and Towson goes up by four, essentially clinching the championship for the Tigers. What they need to make sure that they are smart, and you know that that's what's going on in the huddle right now at, with Towson. We have to execute defensively now. We've got to make sure that we do not go up with the shooter, let the shooter shoot. There's no four-point players out there. All you have to do is back off and you're absolutely right. As long as you don't foul, you are going to the NCAA tournament. Towson 19 and 12 on the season. Drexel 24 and 7. Drexel, when this becomes official, will have lost in the championship round in five of the last eight CAA title games. That they got to those championship games is phenomenal. And that's what, it's so hard to win. It's so hard to win. And for the first time in school history, the Towson Tigers are going to the NCAA tournament. The excitement seen on one side and the disappointment on the other. Always the case in the championship round, but a 53-49 win for Towson. They were down by as many as six in the game, kept battling, kept fighting, led by one at the half, and are crowned CAA champions in their very first CAA championship game. Well, in one of the last huddles that our sideline reporter Matt Janis was able to listen into, it was execute, take a deep breath, calm down and execute from Diane Richardson to her team. And in those five minutes, those last five minutes, they did that. They listened to her, they were able to calm down, they obviously were breathing pretty well, and they executed. They executed both offensively and defensively. And when you do that, 
with a team that's never been to the championship, and it's only Diane Richardson's second year as the head coach. That's when you know that they are playing with each other, for each other, and listening well to their coaching staff because they executed and they were able to finish, Scott. Matt Janis is with Kiana Jeter and head coach Diane Richardson, the 2019 CAA champs. What a moment for Towson, Kiana Jeter. Not your best shooting day, obviously, but you made the shot that mattered most. Walk us through that play as you contorted your way through the lane. Well, we had two possessions left. I knew we needed I knew we needed a shot or to hold the ball, but we really couldn't hold the ball because we, we had two possessions left. So my momentum was going, spread the defense out, and go on a big. Walk me through the emotion of this moment. Your embrace with your teammates. You could see it. The smiles on everybody's faces. You're champions. It's amazing. You know, we, we worked hard this year. We worked hard all year. And a lot of people didn't believe in us, but we believed in ourselves. And we came out with a W today. I'll let you go celebrate because you're dancing. Thank you, thank you. Kiana Jeter, what a performance. And she gets a big hug from her teammate. And now the head coach of Towson. First time in program history. Diane, you guys are headed to the NCAA tournament. Let me know what you're feeling right oh now. Oh, my gosh. I I'm feeling great. Our kids worked so hard this year. And, and like she said, nobody believed us. But they stayed in there. You know, with some ups and downs in this game, but they kept playing. Mayo Murray carried you guys early. Talk about their performance. Absolutely. And again, they had it in their minds that we wanted to win the championship. And they just kept pushing through and they stepped up and they were leaders. And then for Jeter to hit that shot after the day she had had, how about it? Yes, yes, yes. We told her to keep shooting, keep shooting, and she did. Made a big one. You guys are closing in on the NCAA tournament. Obviously, you'll find out, but how excited are you for your team? What's going to be your message? Oh, my goodness, that we're going to the beach. That's what I, that's what our, our message has been all day, that anytime you want to go to the beach, there's always tolls, there's always bridges, but we got to get through those, and we got through them, and the beach was in the horizon today, and we went after it. I'm sure it was worth the investment. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you so much. Thank you. The CAA champ, Diane Richardson, back to you guys. Thank you, Matt. And uh, Jody, you've known Diane Richardson for a long time. I know she's excited to get this group dancing. Well, she just, she just wanted a chance, Scott, to be a head coach on the Division I level. She had been an assistant at the University of Maryland, at American University, most recently at West Virginia University. And prior to that, had a, a real dynasty going at Riverdale Baptist in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. And she has players from the East Coast here, from some from Maryland, who, who really know that she knows what she's doing. And she just wanted a chance. And the, the, her peers voted her coach of the year as well. So they knew. They knew that this is a very special coach and a special year. And now she's backed it up with a championship, Scott. For the first time in school history, Towson going to the NCAA tournament. That'll do it from the Bob Carpenter Center in Newark, Delaware, as the Towson Tigers win the 2019 CAA Women's Basketball Championship 53-49 over Drexel. For extended coverage of the CAA Championship celebration, interviews, trophy presentation, and more, head to collegesportslive.com. For Jody Patrick, Matt Janis on the sideline, producer Frank Lesquadro, and the entire CAA Championship crew, I'm Scott Klatskin. Congratulations, Towson, and we'll see you over on collegesportslive.com for continued championship coverage.
goes down third spot to incorporate history in the NCAA Tournament Contest Challenge. It sounds great. Oh. 